Well, hello there. If you are wondering why I am doing this video in nature, it is because I'm tired of filming in my apartment. As you can see, this is a different day by the location, t-shirt, longer hair. I didn't get to film everything at the Botanic Garden, which is why I am here finishing the video up. So we're gonna be splicing back and forth from home office to outdoors. So let's go back to the video. If you are new here, please subscribe, like the video, comment down below, share it with a friend, a stranger, I don't really care. Uh, follow me on social media, it's linked down below. Also, follow me on my Substack where I rec uh, write articles regarding men's fashion and costume design. It's all linked down below, thank you so much. Let's get on to the video. So, this video is going to be about a garment that I've fallen in love with over the past couple of years, and one that has taken place of my sweatshirts my button-ups, my flannels. It is the kimono. Okay, disclaimer. I really cared about this video and I wanted to do it right, so I did a decent amount of research for this video. Now, it's pretty brief, but what I believe I have is the correct information. Now, if I don't, don't be upset with me. Don't, don't, don't hate me. Don't thumbs it down. Just let me know in the comments down below what I got wrong. And uh, I will learn. This will be a learning experience for all of us because we're here to learn and look at cool kimonos, which I have, so stay tuned for that part. The word kimono comes from two words. Kiru, which means to wear, and mono, which means thing. So put that together, you got thing to wear. Now the first instances of kimono-like clothing was during the Yamato period, which was uh, 300 AD to 710 AD. So during this period, traditional Chinese clothing was introduced to Japan uh, through Chinese envoys, which led the Japanese to be very influenced by China. So now clothing similar to what we consider a kimono today was seen during the Heian period around 794 AD. So traditionally, kimonos are hand-sewn T-shaped garments that are made from four pieces of fabric called tans, and they are finished with an obi or a belt. So the dumbest down version of what a kimono is and the anatomy of a kimono is it is made of three pieces. First, you have the body. Now, typically with garments, you have a front and a back, but with a kimono, you do not. There is no seam. So it is just one piece. Next is the sleeve. Now, with the sleeve, it's not a traditional, like, sew in the armhole. What it basically is, is you take two sleeves, right sides together, sew them at the bottom, flip them inside out, and then sandwich the body into the sleeve so you have your sleeves then you have the collar now the collar as far as i know and can tell it doesn't matter how long it is it could be short it could be halfway it could be all the way down it doesn't really matter it's whatever your preference is the only thing that does matter is how you wear the collar depending on your age gender and i think occasion so lastly is the tie or the belt portion of the kimono uh, not all of them have it like at least the americanized ones that i have but there is some sort of tie to wrap it correctly. So this is the actual anatomy of what a kimono is made from. I'm going to be linking down below the website that has this image and every explanation of what each piece or part of the kimono is. So there are many different types of kimonos and what it all boils down to is difference in gender, type of fabric, type of print, uh, for what occasion, so there are a ton of different kimonos. So like the yukata is a casual kimono made of cotton, normally worn by people, by either farmers or people that didn't really come from money. Then you have the komen, which is a small pattern kimono, again made of cotton and supposed to be an informal kimono. So those are two of them, and the others are Iro Komen, Iro Muji, Tsukesagi, Hamongi, Iro Tomosore, Iro Monski, Kuro Tomosore, Kuro Monski, Mufuku, Shiromuku, Higizuri, Susohiki, and Naragi, which is most of the stuff I have and what I'll be going through. Now, what is a Naragi? A Naragi was traditionally worn by farmers and people that didn't come from money, and it was usually made of cotton. And it could be long, short, the sleeves could be long or short, doesn't really matter. But uh, main points was uh, it was worn by like farmers and was made of cotton because it's a cheap material. So the sleeves on a Naragi are a lot more narrower, like a lot. And I think that's why I kind of 
gravitate towards them because they're a little bit more westernized than some of the other kimonos with they have, when they have these really gorgeous but like very wide sleeves and for me that doesn't really fit my style at this moment obviously so that's why I'm really gravitating towards or have been gravitating towards Naragi's. Ooh, I'm white! I mean, I hope this doesn't feel weird for some random white guy to talk about kimonos, but I'm sure it does. So now we're gonna get into the collection part, the fun part, you know, the flashy part. Um, and I'm gonna show you everything. So this is the first kimono I had ever bought. It was on December 27, 2020. The only reason why I know that is because I bought it off Grailed. It actually took me a, uh, a while to gain the confidence to wear this piece because if you can see, the sleeves are like winged. And originally that kind of threw me off because I wasn't um, used to that. What gravitated me towards this kimono though was the print. I loved the print, a uh, hexagon print with this red, yellow, grayish blue color um, on top of the navy fabric. And then for the collar, it is this black contrast cotton, which I really liked. So for this one, the sleeves are just past my elbows and the body is just past my hips. So this was the second one I ever bought, which was on October 19th, 2021, almost a full year after I bought my first one. And again, the only reason why I know that is because I bought it from a flea market. Brooklyn Flea, there is a vendor who sells kimonos, awesome kimonos. Um, and I had a picture from that day, so that's the only reason why. I'm not a psychopath, I don't know all my purchases. The reason why I really like this one was because it's a, a lot lighter. The, the previous one was padded, so it's pretty thick and really good for like fall and winter. This one, a lot lighter, it's like this cotton material. And I like the color, it's like this beige color, and the stitching. There's this gray, thick stitching all over the garment, which um, creates this pattern, and it's just like this beautiful, boxed pattern with these little like triangular pieces within the box. So for the length on this one, the sleeves are a little bit past my elbows. As you can see, I have them cuffed up and then um, the length is a little bit above my knee. So I like the fit of the previous one so much that I decided to make my own. Uh, basically what I did was I took the measurements from that one and then just made my own pattern. And I had these uh, blue and white striped drapes that I wanted to make something out of and I thought the kimono would look perfect in it. This one is even lighter so it's perfect for like the summer actually. As you can see I rolled the sleeves up so it's almost more like a short sleeve kimono on me but it's still long. It's uh, The sleeves are a little bit past my elbows like um, the previous one and again a little bit above my knee but this sleeve is a little bit wider. So this next one actually might be my favorite one and it is a present from my girlfriend um, for my birthday, it is this Western Native American uh, Japanese kimono all mixed into one. The reason why I like it so much is I love the print. It is in this like Native American print, which is really pretty. It's like brown, um, tan, navy, and like burnt orange, which looks really nice. And then the collar is in this like denim fabric, which has salvage on the left side, which is a very cool touch. I thought for me. And this one is a lot more westernized, like it has regular shirting sleeves and um, there are some patch pockets on the front. I really like the details on this one because there's just like chambray fabric, like yoke on the inside, which is, nobody gets to really see it, but it's just a really cool detail for me. So for the fit on this one, this hits just at my hips and then the sleeves are actually pretty long. They almost go all the way to my fingertips. But um, yeah, it is awesome. It's made of wool. So this is more suitable for like the fall and maybe winter and layering, so stuff like that. But it is an amazing piece. Next up we have is this reversible kimono, which with the, this dolman sleeve. The inside, it is just plain black. And then on the outside, it is uh, this navy, yellow, and like burnt red, burnt orange colorway. It is in this like floral type of pattern print. It's very cool. Again, I'm a little bit uh, intimidated by this pattern because I'm not used to wearing a pattern like this, but uh, gotta step out of the comfort zone sometimes, you know? The reason why I like this one was because it was reversible and I wanted a black kimono, so this was kind of perfect. So the, for the fit of this one, it hits my hips and it goes 
right to my forearms, basically. So last up for my kimonos, we have probably the most expensive kimono I own. It is a traditional, from Japan, cotton kimono. Uh, the guy who sold it to me said that he has a friend that goes to Japan and um, goes door to door and asks people if they're, they want, they would like to sell their kimonos, which I don't know if that's that cool, I don't know. Anyways, it is this true vintage Japanese kimono in this navy green and like burnt orange colorway. It's gorgeous, it's padded so it's pretty thick. Um, the lining is crumbling as you can tell. The collar is of this like, I don't know if it's cotton or what fabric it is, but it is this black floral detailed cotton which is really nice. And uh, again, I like that contrast with the navy and the black. This does have a bit of a winged sleeve, but not that, not that drastic. So the sleeves are a little bit past my elbows and the length is a little bit past my, my mid thigh. It's great for the fall, great for the winter. Can't wait to wear it. So my outfits vary when it comes to wearing kimonos, like depends which one I'm wearing, but for the most part, it's like vintage denim, cargos, uh, boots as always and uh, like a, a simple t-shirt with either a simple graphic um, or maybe just a blank t-shirt because I want the kimono to really be the statement piece. So I'll wear something like this. Well, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, give the like a video, give the video a like, uh, comment down below which uh, kimono was your favorite. Let me know what you would like me to do next, whether it's costume design, fashion, custom clothing, anything, let me know. Would I do more fashion related posts instead of like the costume design stuff? I wanted to do more like story based, so this was kind of my first journey into that direction. Um, it's not just gonna be me point and shoot like a point and shoot like this is what I bought I'm kind of bored of that and I think everybody else is on the YouTubes So I hope you come along for the ride. Thank you. If you haven't already follow me on my social media It's all linked down below Twitter Instagram and TikTok. I'm also on Substack where I write fashion related articles Yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching uh, it really actually does mean a lot and uh, the channel is starting to grow the tiniest bit which is fucking awesome and I appreciate every single one of you. Uh, that's it. Um, take care. I hope you have a good day. Peace.